Browsing fantastic fiction one day, I come across Stephen L. Kent and his clone series. Browsing the sci-fi and fantasy shelf at work, I come across book one, and I thought, what the hell? It's the 26th century. Wason Harris is a marine fresh from training. He is a crack shot, tactically adept, and in perfect physical shape. But his first assignment in an army of clones is to be sent to a backwater hole with the dregs of the Corps. Things go steadily downhill from there. First person past tense from the perspective of Private Harris, aside from a few moments where we see third person ship to ship combat, those moments do actually spoil the flow and the immersion more than you might think. I mean, the prose does flow nicely, however, and everything is written in a very comfortable way. I have some very mixed feelings about this one. On the one hand, it's pretty well written. I mean, as I said, the prose flows nicely. There's enough descriptive text to set scenes and give you an idea of the surroundings without going into excruciating detail. Uh, the way this particular sci-fi universe is set up is introduced at natural moments, with the first-person perspective helping quite a bit in that regard. And the characters, central character included, are good enough to be interesting, although none are particularly memorable. On the other hand, both the story and the universe that's been created for it are littered with convoluted setups, moments of face-palming stupidity, and in-universe fluff that makes no sense whatsoever. Things like uh, marines being far better equipped for clandestine infiltration missions than dedicated spec ops troops, or the fact that this future army is comprised mainly of expendable clones, but the clones themselves are not only paid, but given shore leave. I mean, say what you like about the Star Wars prequels, and shit, son, there's been plenty said, but one thing Lucas got absolutely right was the fact that, hey, these are clones, and they will fight, and they will die when ordered, and they will like it. These things don't ruin the novel exactly, but they do lessen it, if only because I kept spotting them. Generally, it feels like Kent wanted certain things to happen, uh, perhaps to show certain parts of the universe he's created, but the universe he created wasn't quite up to the task without some serious, and dare I say unreasonable, suspension of disbelief required. Wayton Harris is okay as a main character. He's not exactly the life of the party, but being firmly ensconced in his head and as such getting his own personal insight into whatever is happening really helps the novel as a whole. In fact, I think if this were written in normal third person, all the niggles I brought up would make it far less enjoyable all round. Because being inside Harris's head and seeing Harris happily accept that this is just how things are, actually helps a whole hell of a lot with us accepting that this is just how things are. If I have one problem with Harris, it's... well, it's this. There's something unique about Harris, something that's actually quite well written in terms of how it's conveyed. And because of this uniqueness, certain characters around Harris start to build him up to be this epic level badass mofo. But the only reason Harris survives to the end of the novel is because of either the skill or the incompetence of other people. The other characters we encounter, well, given we spent all our time in Harris's head, we don't exactly get to know them all that well, which is a shame. Because, quite frankly, I would have liked to have spent some time with Fleet Admiral Bryce Kleiber. For reasons that are made clear in the novel, Kleiber has quite an interest in Harris, and getting some proper insight into the whys and hows could have been fascinating. Similarly with Harris's clone buddy Vince Lee, getting an idea of what goes on in his head could have been wonderful. But I guess that's the weakness with one perspective, first person. Is this a bad novel? Absolutely not. Is it a fantastic novel? Hell no. What it is, is a fairly entertaining romp with a nicely realised 26th century that I could actually believe would be the case. I haven't quite decided if I want to read on in this series. I mean, there are seven more at the time of recording. So, uh, take that however you wish. So, yeah, it, it's not bad. But I think with a little bit more thought, it could have been so much better.